on astronomy. Copernicus was troubled by Ptolemy's complex heavenly mechanics. But he found an elegant solution. When he moved the Earth from the center of the solar system, and replaced it with the sun at the heart of it all. When Copernicus put the planets going around the sun, he discovered that the planet Mercury, which goes around in about three months, automatically fell closest to the sun. And Saturn, the slowest planet, which goes around in about 30 years, automatically fell at the outside edge. Copernicus wrote, in no other way do we find such a sure harmonious connection between the size of the orbit and its period. That seemed almost magical. Copernicus also insisted that the Earth was rotating, that it spun completely around on an axis every 24 hours. The heavens didn't move. We did. Stars chasing across the sky each night were merely an illusion created by the rotating Earth. Likely afraid of church reprisals, Copernicus withheld publishing his theory until he was on his deathbed in 1543. But his book, Concerning the Revolutions of the Celestial Orbs, paved the way for Johannes Kepler, born in 1571, the champion of observational science. Kepler was the real hero here because he was the one that really came out and trumpeted to the world that the sun has to be the center. Kepler had at his disposal a trove of astronomical data collected through years of staring at the sky. When he chugged through his observations and did the calculations, he realized that not only was the sun the center of the solar system, but the perfect circles were a figment also. It was uglier philosophically, but it really matched the data. Kepler improved on the Copernican system by hypothesizing that the planets traveled not in perfect circles, but in ellipses around the sun. Kepler's data also pointed to a strange phenomenon he struggled but failed to understand. As planets approach the sun, they speed up. Further away, they slow down. Together, the sun-centered universe and the variable speed of the planets best explain what we see here on Earth. Suddenly, and for the first time, the sun-centered picture gives better predictions than the Earth-centered picture. And then you have not only something that's driven by data, but does what science is supposed to do, which is to make predictions which are good. But as one cosmic riddle appeared solved, another remained. Kepler saw that the sun influenced the speed of the planets as they traveled through space. But how? Before anyone addressed this mystery, dogma and science collided in a conflict that reverberates to this very day. At the turn of the 17th century, Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei would take the theories of Copernicus and Kepler, that the sun was at the center of the solar system, and prove them right beyond any shadow of a doubt. He did this with a new technology that would change the course of history. The telescope, in some sense, is the most blasphemous, the most seditious, the most revolutionary 
and the most splendorous instrument of science. All of science received the greatest of gifts in this tool that brought distant objects close. Once the idea got out that you could take two lenses, line them up in such a way, put them in a tube, and make a spyglass out of it, that would spread like wildfire around the world, as it did. And so the issue now is not who's got the telescope, but do you now know what to do with it? Are you looking in people's windows, or are you looking up and out into the universe? Galileo improved on the design in 1609 by grinding his own lenses and creating one that could magnify an unprecedented 30 times. And with that telescope, for some reason, he decided to look at the sky as opposed to the incoming ships to the Republic of Venice. And what he saw completely changed the scope of astronomy. Galileo was treated to the clearest, most detailed view of the heavens any person had ever known. Through his telescope, Galileo saw thousands more stars. A moon pocked with craters, satellites circling Jupiter, Saturn with giant ears. Greatest of all, Galileo plainly saw that Venus went through phases like our moon. Clear evidence that Venus orbits the sun. Proof of a sun-centered solar system. It showed for the first time that Copernicus was really right. The Earth wasn't the center of the solar system, the sun was. So Galileo, with his telescope, pushed the Earth away from the center of the universe and said, we're not the center of everything. We're one planet among others, and there could be a much larger universe than we know. What Copernicus had assumed for aesthetic reasons, what Kepler deduced through measurements and mathematics, Galileo proved. Galileo saw. Galileo revealed. The ancients had seen everything that could be possibly seen to the naked eye. It really took a new instrument to get beyond that. The telescope, that was where the breaking point was between the ancients and the moderns. Centuries of church dogma claiming Earth was the center of the universe was now plainly wrong. With the Catholic Church still reeling from the schism of the Protestant Reformation, Galileo's discovery appeared to undermine scripture dangerous for a church that felt under siege dangerous for a scientist proposing it nevertheless Galileo a devout Catholic published his observations in a book called the starry messenger in 1610 surprisingly the church welcomed Galileo's findings at first had Galileo been a little more careful in his approach, he might have gotten away with it. One famous quotation from Cardinal Baronius, a predecessor, was, the Bible tells us how to go to heaven, not how the heavens go. Ultimately, Galileo's downfall was not his inability to sway the church to his way of thinking, but rather his attempt at interpreting scripture all by himself, independent of the church. And Galileo quotes the famous uh, St. Augustine, who said that if you found an interpretation of scripture which seemed to be contradicted by well-established knowledge, then you should reconsider that interpretation of scripture. But the church, concerned with perceived threats to its own power, could not concede biblical interpretation to Galileo. In 1633, after Galileo published a new book championing the sun-centered system, the Pope summoned him to stand trial 